Welcome to the channel, folks. So today's video is going to be covering the newly updated and released Honeywell Home X2P programmable thermostat. And in this video, we're going to be covering the setup menu and the ISU, which are the installer setup options on this device. I also have other videos on manual override, seven day programming and factory reset and battery replacement on this particular device. So please check those out and I will link them down below the video and in the upper right in the cards, which is that white dot with the I, the information symbol there. Click on that and you'll find a list of videos related to this thermostat right here that you're seeing in this video. All right, with that being said, let's get into the setup menu and the ISU options. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and hold down the fan button and the up arrow button at the same time. Hold it for about seven seconds. There we go. So here we have the ISU options. We're gonna to wanna to go and hit select. And now you're gonna get this number that comes up on the screen. So this is the, the setting or the ISU number. And this is the selection here on the right that's flashing. So I'm just gonna cycle through these really quick by hitting next. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of these. Depending on what model you have, you might have more or less. So we're just gonna back up. And we're gonna start with this one that says 1040. And I'm gonna go right to the manual and show you guys what that means. So 1040, it is the scheduling option. So this is pretty much uh, you want basically the whole week, the format of this of the actual programming. So selection one is going to be one week, all days the same. Okay, so each day is going to have the exact same uh, repetitive, basically schedule uh, each and every day. Then you have the option of number two, which is it's selected right now. It's a five two programmable um, block. So that means five days of the week the weekdays and then two days in the weekend are two separate blocks and you can program them in two separate blocks or chunks. Or the third option, which is 511, so that's f the weekdays, the five weekdays, and then each one of the Saturday and Sunday are individually tailored separately. And then the very last one, which is number four, is the seven day individual programming schedule. So each day can have its own separate schedule. So this format here, it allows some flexibility depending on how you want it, okay? Obviously, if you did, number one, it's the easiest because you can set the schedule uh, pretty much the same and it applies to all the days of the week. And the more complex one, which would, or the more, when it's more like kind of la labor intensive to set up is number four. So that's seven day programming, which programs each day separately. So you, you will have to loop through and toggle through each day in four periods of the day. So that's 28 times you have to kind of like toggle through there. So it's up to you which one you want to do, but I like the seven day individual. So number four, I'm going to select number four on mine. Okay. And hit next. The next one is 1050. 1050 is going to be the temperature sc indication scale. So that's Fahrenheit or Celsius. So I'm going to leave it on Fahrenheit. Next one is 2000. 2000 is heating system type, and the selection is one for conventional forced air heat, two is heat pump, three is radiant heat, and five is none, cool only. So if it's only set up for cooling, you would set up five. But for my case, it's the radiant heat, which is baseboard heating. I'm gonna set it to three, and then hit next on that. Then the next one is the ISU number is 2010. 2010 is the heating equipment type. One is going to be standard efficiency gas forced air. Then two is high efficiency gas forced air. Three is oil forced air. Four is electric forced air. Five is hot water fan coil. Nine is hot water radiant heat. So that's my selection there. That's, that would be baseboard heating, um, forced hot water. And then 12 is steam. So we're going to leave mine on 9. And then the next one we're going to advance through is 2070. 
So 2070 is the cool stages, compressor stages. You have the options of zero, one, or two. So depending on how many stages your actual unit is, you have to find that out and then make the proper selection here. And then the next one is going to be 2071, which is the same thing, but for heating. So heating stages slash backup heat stages. Okay, so it, you have the option of one single stage or two stage. So you have to figure out what your system type is, system stage type is, and then see if you have one or two stages. And you would select that there. So the next one's going to be 3000. And in the manual, there's actually another entry here. So we have 2180, which is not on my thermostat, but it's auxiliary backup heat. And the selection is 31. Electric forced air. So if you don't have one of these others selected, it's not, it's probably going to jump over this one here. So if you don't have electric forced air selected on 2010, this one's not going to show up, which it doesn't on mine. Mine goes right to 3000. So 3000 is system changeover. Zero is going to be hidden manual only and one is enabled. So this means, do you want it to automatically change between heating and cooling? If, if you want to say yes, you want it to automatically go back and forth, you would select one, enable. Otherwise, if you want to do it manually, you would sit, select zero. And I like to do it manually, so I'm going to leave it on zero, because that way I'll switch it manually by myself, depending on the season. I'll go over and flick it and change the mode myself. So I like to do that, but you can leave it as an automatic changeover if you want. The next one is 4090 on my thermostat here. And that's smart response. It's either zero equals no or one equals yes. This basically will uh, kind of preheat the zone and turn the, the, the heating system or cooling system on kind of to preheat or pre-cool the area. That way for the allotted time that you set as the, the scheduled period, it kind of preheats it or pre-cools it to get up to that temperature quicker and at that time, it's going to be that temperature versus um, it just turns on at that time and then may take an hour or two from that, that set point time. Um, when you program the actual thermostat, you have those four periods is what I'm talking about. So if you wanted to like preheat or pre-cool, you would select this one for yes. And then the next one, the next one is 4103. And that's minimum heat set point. You can dial this thing from 32 to, to 50 degrees. The default is 40. So if you were in a, for some reason you wanted to drop the temperature, um, you know, all the way down to like 35 degrees, say it's like a, like a garage, but you don't want it to, to fully go to 32, but you want to keep it at 35 as your minimum kind of like heating set point. You could do that with this and you could adjust it all the way down to 32 if you wanted to. So that's, that's just a minimum set point. I'm going to leave it at 40. Next one is 7110. 7110 is air put 7110 is air filter replacement reminder. And there's different formats here. You can either do it so zero is going to be off, and then you have runtime days. So it starts with number one being 10 runtime days, then 220 runtime days, all the way to 150 runtime days for selection number eight. And then at numbered selection nine, it turns into calendar days. So 30 calendar days, and then it goes 45, 60, 75 calendar days for a selection 12. At selection 13, it switches over to calendar months. Okay, so it has three, four, five, six, nine, 12, and 15 months. 15 months is selection 19, which is your last one. So it, it, it allows you different kind of like... Um, intervals, whatever you want to choose, whether it's runtime days or actual calendar days or months. So that's good to know. Next one is 14005, and that's idle screen selection. Zero is minimum information shown. One is set point shown on idle screen, and two is maximum display information shown. I like to, to see all the information I can, so I'm going to set that to two, so that's maximum. Let's go to the next one. 
which is 14.010. And that's going to be clock format, either 12 or 24 hours. We're going to leave it 12 for normal people here. Um, and then 14.015, and that's going to be your daylight savings, which is zero off or one on. I'm going to leave that on so it automatically adjusts. And that's going to be it. That's like the, the last spot to check here and to adjust. I'm going to show you something else. So we're going to hit save and exit. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So moving on, I want to show you if you have a alert or a reminder on here, which I don't, what you actually can do is press the menu button. It's not going to show it up now because I don't have an alert or a, rem a reminder, but if you press the menu button, when, when you have an alert or a reminder, you have a little triangle that shows up on the bottom of the screen here. It's actually going to give you a number, okay? So to give you a number, when I first started this thermostat up, it gave me a number of 171, which is set time and date because I didn't, I, ha I just put the batteries in and it was prompting me to set the time and date. So once I hit the menu button, it actually showed up here on the screen 171 and then <clears throat> it, it scrolled the information on the screen saying, set time and date okay so that's how you can see what the reminders are you'll have a little triangle here then go ahead and press the menu button to see what they are then you're going to get a number value from this list okay so here are the alert numbers and the alert meanings so 405 is going to be thermostat batteries low 407 is thermostat batteries are critically low replace batteries 170 is thermostat memory failure internal problem with the thermostat memory 171 is set time and date and 173 is internal sensor issue or error error with the built-in temperature sensor okay and that there are the reminders you're going to see on the screen on this unit and <clears throat> that pretty much covers your isu and your setup options. This is something you're going to want to do if you get the thing brand new. You want to go through these settings and completely change them to your, your heating type, cooling type, and the type of setup in your home. Uh, as well as, you know, get familiar with the whole process because it's, it's really nice to know how to change these things on the fly sometimes. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, um, please place them right down below. Also check out my videos I'll place them right down below the video and in the cards, like I said, um, covering the manual override setup, which we did here, programming, seven-day programming, complete kind of rundown on that, as well as factory reset and the battery replacement and backplate, okay? So there's four parts to this, to this series of thermostat, and I will link those down below the video so you guys can check out each piece and um, kind of chew it on, you know, chew on it in pieces. That way you can, you know, certain times you might have a question about manual override and then another day it might be programming. So that's why I do it in pieces. That way you guys can like, you know, view the topics as needed. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next video.